In this video, I'm going to tell you about my five most incredibly stupid lucid dreaming deaths. And this is times where I've had a lucid dream and I've been, you know, really engaged with what I was doing. And for whatever reason, I died. I, something killed me in the dream. Uh, so number one, OK, I was walking down this sort of forest path. OK, and there were all these weird flowers sort of growing like uh, around the sides of this path. And for some reason, I thought or I expected I was lucid at this point. Right. But I, for some reason, I expected the flowers would become alive they would come alive and start attacking me no idea why i thought this would happen but for some reason this is what i expected to happen so these flowers and they were blue and white okay these blue and white flowers started to creep up around me they entangled around my body and then they basically suffocated me <laughs> and yeah this was a pretty scary death in a lucid dream this was a pretty scary lucid dream story i guess and yeah so they suffocated me and i woke up instantly and i was kind of freaked out and then from that point on uh, I never dreamed about flowers again. I thought, let's just not risk it. So number two, I was walking down. So, uh, it always starts with me walking usually, right? Except the last one, which is kind of different. Number two, I'm walking down this mountain path. And for some reason, I try and jump up in the air. I try and jump to start flying, okay? And yet what happens is I'm not completely lucid. I'm not as stable as I would want to be. I've done a couple of reality checks, but I'm not like 100% lucid. I'm one of the lower layers of lucid dreaming in this uh, situation. And so I jump up, I try and fly, and I don't quite do it. I don't quite get into the air and start actually flying. Uh, and so what happens is I roll down the hill or the mountain uh, and just roll until I wake up, basically. I guess I, guess I died. It's kind of hard to tell, really, but I just kept on tumbling down this hill. Uh, I couldn't stop myself. And there were rocks falling behind me, you know, it was making a load of noise. I'm not entirely sure why it happened. I think because I didn't really, I didn't really go for it. When I tried to fly, I kind of doubted it. I was just like thinking, yeah, I should be able to fly now. I'm lucid enough. Uh, I rushed to the reality check. I didn't pay attention really to it. Uh, and so I died. <laughs> so number three, I'm actually climbing a tree now. I'm climbing this kind of palm tree and I don't know how I'm climbing it because it has no branches but I'm sort of like my hands are sticking to it like a chameleon and uh, I don't have any hooks or anything but I'm just climbing this tree I'm lucid and uh, when I get to the top of the tree the tree starts to rock back and forward it starts to sway and eventually it gets to the point where it's swaying so much that I'm touching the ground on either side of this tree and then out of nowhere out of literally nowhere the ground starts growing these kind of spiky things like giant spiky, uh, whatever you'd call them, bits of metal coming out of the ground, like giant pins. And this, the tree is still swaying at this point. And I'm desperately trying to control the sway of this tree. And I'm telling myself, you know, I'm lucid. This shouldn't be, I should be in control here. And I'm trying to stabilize the tree. I'm thinking like, should I jump out and start flying? Should I try and climb down? Uh, but I don't have enough time. And so the tree sways from one side to the other. And then eventually it sways so close to the spike that I get kind of impaled by the spike and uh, yeah I wake up and I'm not very happy about it because I the night before I basically planned to, this, to do this crazy adventure in that lucid dream I planned to like try and ask my subconscious specific things and try and understand more about this decision I've been con contemplating before and that's what happened I ended up on this tree getting impaled by this giant spike number four now before I tell this story I don't know if you've seen the film get out but in the film Get Out, uh, it's this guy who goes to meet his girlfriend's parents. And I don't want to tell you the twist at the end, but basically the mother is a hypnotherapist and she tries to hypnotize this guy to get him to stop smoking. And part of that process is he's sitting in this like armchair like this one, I guess. And he, he, she, he gets hypnotized by this woman. And at some point she says, OK, now you will now sink into the chair. And of course, he sinks into the chair. But the visual on the film is you actually see him like fall into the chair and below underground into this dark kind of uh, in-between space, this kind of limbo area where he's floating around. He can see like really far in the distance. He can see a TV screen with what is, you know, what his body can actually see. But his awareness, his consciousness has been sunken down into what the mother calls the sunken place. And so, yeah, so with that being said, Here's the dream story. I guess this is death number four. I can't remember which number I'm on. I'm sitting on an armchair and I'm watching the film from the armchair. Okay, so this is like, a, I guess, a couple of days after I saw the film. I'm watching the film from an armchair 
And I'm thinking, oh yeah, it would be crazy if that happened. Imagine being sunken down into your chair. And of course, what, <laughs> of course, what happens is the scene comes on the film where the chair sinking happens. I then sink into the chair and I freak out and I'm thinking, no, but this can't, this is a dream. I'm meant to be watching this film in my dream. And sometimes, by the way, I do random things in my lucid dreams. Like I will watch films, okay, in a lucid dream. I'll be lucid and I'll decide to watch a film. I know it's crazy. It's kind of weird. You might be thinking I'm wasting the dream doing that. I, I, I sort of view it as extra time. So sometimes I will do things that I just feel like doing in the moment. Sometimes it's meditating. Sometimes I go for a peaceful walk in the dream. I don't do anything crazy. Sometimes I literally just walk down the forest uh, or walk on the beach and just enjoy that experience of knowing that it's a dream. Anyway, so yeah, I was watching this film. I sink into the chair and I actually get stuck there for about what feels like five minutes or so. But of course, in the dream, that's more like a few seconds. But it feels like a few minutes that I'm stuck there and I can't move and I'm just trying to get out of this sunken place. I'm just floating around wondering when I will wake up. <laughs> uh, but of course, yeah, you, if you're watching this and you're thinking like, oh, I don't want to lose a dream now because that sounds scary. It's not like that for most people. Uh, and in fact, even if you have that experience, like uh, it feels like a five minutes, it's more like a few seconds in real life. So it's really nothing to worry about. And it's kind of fun. Like when you wake up from that experience, it's kind of a, a scary yet exciting thing to remember. It's like, oh, well, it felt like I was trapped in a dream, uh, but, I'm, but now I'm awake and everything's fine. Anyway, so number five, the last lucid dreaming death that I've had is a different one. So I'm not walking, I'm not climbing anything in this dream. In this dream, I'm actually underwater. And so the dream begins when I'm, if you've ever watched scuba diving videos or even better, if you've had a scuba diving experience, then you'll know that you sometimes forget which way is up. Okay, if you're underwater, if you're deep underwater, you sometimes forget which way is up and which way is down. And especially if it's a dark or cloudy day and the sun doesn't make it obvious where the surface of the water is, you can kind of lose track of which direction you're going in. And, and this is kind of scary even in real life, okay? But now imagine you're in a lucid dream. So, so I'm lucid, I'm diving, it's a cloudy day. I can't really work out where the surface is. And I feel like I'm quite deep underwater, okay? This feels like I'm really, really deep. I don't know how far. And I'm floating around, I'm looking at these fish and suddenly this giant snake starts coming towards me. This is like a massive sort of yellow and black anaconda type snake. The type from the, like from the film Anaconda, you know where it's like a massive one that's been overgrown because it had some orchid flower. And it starts sort of slithering towards me in the water and I know I need to escape, I need to get up to the surface but I can't work out which direction it's in. So I end up actually going deeper underwater. I go towards the, the, the ocean floor and I realize my mistake when I actually see the ocean floor and I think, hold on a second, this is, <laughs> I'm going the wrong way here. The snake is kind of circling me like a weird uh, shark type thing. And I'm thinking, this is bad. This is gonna end badly. Although I'm lucid, I can't seem to work out how to escape this. So I try talking to the snake. It doesn't really respond. Uh, and time runs out, okay? You know, if, you've, if you've been in a lucid dream where it turns into a bad lucid dream, like a lucid nightmare, you'll know how this feels. Time feels like it's running out you know it's going to end badly and so you just kind of have to watch <laughs> yourself getting eaten by the snake. In this case the snake actually doesn't touch me but what happens is I start drowning. I start gasping for air. I feel like I just can't get that fresh breath of air that you need. You know when, you're un when you've been holding your breath for a long time you just need that refreshing breath of air. I can't seem to get it and I drown. I then watch the snake sort of wrap around me and then it eats me, but the actual death was caused by the drowning. So I woke up pretty annoyed and pretty scared. Yeah, so I just wanted to say, if you've been hearing these stories and you're kind of scared about lucid dreaming, I wanna make it very clear that these are not common experiences, unless you already have lots of nightmares. Most of the time, I lucid dream about really cool things and it's exciting and fun and life-changing and profound and all of that stuff. But yeah, sometimes it doesn't go well. It doesn't go according to plan and it's just kind of a scary or bad experience. <laughs> but yeah, please don't let this put you off. And if you do want to learn how to lucid dream, or if you've never had a lucid dream, but you kind of want the experience, then I do have a video course called the Lucid Breakthrough course, which is linked in the description. It basically shows you how to lucid dream, even if you've tried and nothing's worked. It's specifically for people who have already tried. So if you haven't tried yet, don't get this course because you can probably just learn for free on YouTube or something like that. But if you have tried and it's not worked, then the course is in the description. And leave a comment letting me know your scariest or 
what you would imagine to be your scariest lucid dreaming experience. Like what would you really not want to have happen? Uh, and yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys. This video and this channel are supported by my Patreon followers. Please consider giving just a dollar a month to support this channel or just click the links in the description and you'll find links to various lucid dreaming products, articles, techniques and tutorials. If you did enjoy this video, please click the notification bell and subscribe and I'll see you next time.